then three weeks of housekeeping duties, which if you've done some reading, you know that the honeybee that comes out of the cell starts cleaning cells. For a period of time, for three weeks, they cycle through all of the housekeeping duties inside the hive. When they get to be about three weeks out of the cell, they have matured to the point, and their flight muscles have matured to the point where they become 40. The next thing you have to understand is your environment. Where are you? Well, I can guarantee you if you live in Greene County, you're going to have a slightly different situation than if you live in this county. If you live up close to Cleveland, you're going to have a completely situation, different situation where you are than where I am in Greene County and where Cincinnati is. So you've got to understand your environment. You've got to understand your microenvironment, where you have your colonies located. Which way is the wind come from? If the wind is coming from that quarter, guess what? You don't want to have your entrance face so the wind just whips right up through and blows cold air. You want to turn it off to the side a little bit. Is there a frost pocket? You don't necessarily want to have your beehive at the bottom of a slope, especially if it's near a river. Why? It stays dank, stays moist, possibility of mold, doesn't warm up. If you want to have it kind of high up, you want to have it where the sun hits it, you want to have it in a place where it's protected from the prevailing wind. Each of my colonies, the one that we show, saw up front, is facing south. It's at the edge of the woods. But that woods, what's not clear from that picture, is as the colony's entrance is facing south, that woods does this on the west side. My prevailing wind comes <coughs> from the southwest. It's got to get through that woods. My hives are in the lee of that woods, so they don't get direct wind. But they get the morning, but they get the daily sun all the time. How much sun? How much shade does it get? If it gets daily sun starting early, that warms the colony up. That warming of the colony is a kicker that causes the forages to get out early. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of, kind of gauge that a little bit. If you have it on a barren place that gets sun all day in August, guess what? By the time it hits two or three o'clock in the afternoon, your foraging force, in order to keep the hive cool, changes from collecting nectar to collecting water. Why? Say it. Cool the hive. Cool the hive. They turn the hive into a gigantic swamp cooler, which is what they call it out in Arizona. They put droplets of water throughout the hive, and then they spend energy circulating air and evaporating it and cooling it down. So that means you want to have it to where somewhere around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon when they start getting some shade. Why is that? That way, since the hive is not overheating, they continue to forage for nectar, which is what you want them to do. Hive placement, we've talked about that. The next thing you need to find out in your environment is what's your plant structure, which goes back to your question. The particular picture that I showed you showed two deeps and three medium. And the question was, are they active enough to fill those? Yes. Why? Because they're on the edge of an alfalfa field. <coughs> they're at the edge of a woods, a large woods. They're far away from any kind of what I deem to be barren land, which is all developed property. I don't care how many flowers you plant in your flower bed, <coughs> you're not going to substitute for a, a uh, wild flower area. The particular area where those are located are located next to two state parks with natural Ohio prairie in both of them. So my bees, that's within their flying range. They're getting to those flowers. <laughs> okay? So you want to take a look. And this is the other data point that you guys need to build up for yourself. Um, you might not be able to read this. Across the top is the months. Down the side is some individual plants that I used for about the first five to seven years to start understanding what was going on in the plant world where I lived. 
First was willow and maple, then the dandelion, black locust, basswood trees, fruit trees, clover, white, golden rod, and asters. What I did for the first seven years was whenever I would see, I, I would find a willow tree, and that would be my marker. And I would drive by that willow tree once a day on my way to work. And when I saw that that guy was blooming, I would take this piece of paper and I'd put a little diamond and I'd write the date down. And as I would watch it, it would bloom and it would bloom and finally the bloom would drop off. And I'd put a little diamond there and I'd draw a line. I did the same thing for maple, dandelion, black locust, basswood, fruit trees, and so on. After doing this for seven years, I got an understanding in the locale where I was what the cycle of the plant life was in my area. Now, you see what's happening. If you understand when the plants are doing what they do, you can map that to the six-week mindset and understand what's going on in the colony in order to take advantage of this. So this is a key data point. If you're not aware of this, gardeners, you probably are more aware of it than I was when I started. I had to do this kind of thing for five to seven years in order to understand what was going on in the world around me. You gardeners probably have a better sense of that or have already gone through that. But it still probably wouldn't be a, a wasted effort because you're focusing on plants that are important to honeybees. Willow and maple are the first natural pollen that you get in the springtime. Dandelion is, again, one of the earliest, my wife hates this, my yard in our development is the only one that I encourage dandelions to I mean, all the dandelions from all the rest of the neighbors are migrating into my yard. I tell her, don't worry about it. The yellow will be gone, then it'll be all green, and it looks like grass. Just get real. But they are absolutely <coughs> crucial to honeybee development. Black locust. The reason I track back to the black locust, has anybody tasted pure black locust honey? Can you describe it to me? It's kind of clear liquid and sweet as it can And the smell. You guys know what black locust is? Yeah. I mean, in the springtime, about Mother's Day, you can walk outside, shut your eyes, and you can smell this absolutely heavenly scent. If you collect pure black locust honey, it looks like water, but you open the jar up, and guess what? That smell comes right up out of the honey. And it's got the most delicate flavor. It's better than clover. But guess what? Where I live in Ohio, the black locust starts about Mother's Day and lasts maybe 10 days, if I'm lucky. In 15 years of beekeeping, I've had honey supers ready for black locusts every Mother's Day. My wife thinks I pay attention to Mother's Day because it's her, right? Forget it. That's when the black locust starts. That's why I remember where Mother's Day is. I've only 